Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for the, to, to the organizers uh, for this session, and thank you also for accepting my paper. Um, talking about the 12th century or uh, 11th century in uh, uh, Bohemia and Moravia, we have to start uh, in the 20th century, uh, in, uh, when, in uh, 1918, after the First World War, the new state, Czechoslovakia, was declared, and it was the moment of a constructing of a new identity of a new, a newly established state. And uh, also this was one of the reasons of foundation one year later, the State Archaeological Institute. Um, since 1948, maybe you know there's a time when the communists came to the power in the Czechoslovakia, started a systematic support of the research of early medieval fortified sites. It's necessary to say that uh, the focus on uh, early medieval centers, central places, started already between the wars and was very uh, highly supported by official official places, even by the president uh, and uh, other um, private either private money. Uh, there was a very strong focus on the pre-state formations to let's say justify the new country and. The focus was on the Great Moravia uh, in the 9th to the beginning of the 10th century, and then the move of the power to Bohemia, to the Przemysty domain, uh, the area that was uh, controlled by a family of Przemysty that later in the 13th century came as a royal, royal power. Uh, the concepts, the narratives that were used presented the Bohemia and Moravia, they wanted to present it as the independent units. As, as, as the Great Moravia, as the first premise to main units, they were fighting against the outer enemy. And this approach was very useful between the wars and again uh, after, after the wars during the communist regime when, when the Iron Curtain was built, also, the Western enemy was something that must be stressed also by the archaeologists. And of course, there was also a nationalistic part, so the enemy mostly was the German, not the Slavic, of course. Uh, this approach very hardly changed, uh, very hardly influenced the picture of, uh, of uh, our knowledge. We can see that the 50 of excavations for fortified sites were carried only on 10 sites, sites that were mentioned especially in the written sources. Um, most of them in the Chronicle of the Cosmos. The Chronicle was written in the 12th century and was something like a justification of the Przemyslid to rule over Bohemia and Moravia. So again, who is writing our concepts of uh, research, the Chronicles, from the 12th century. And there are the other red dots, so they are the most investigated are green. The other red dots are fortified sites. Uh, they were in, in, uh, investigated in much more, much less effort and 120 for almost 12, 200 together, 25, uh, fortified sites were survived only by the non-destructive methods. So our picture is very hardly uh, deformed. That leads uh, for, uh, to some results. So it's Western or the European view on the position of the Bohemia and Moravia. So you can see it's on the eastern side of the whole Roman Empire. But the narratives that we can see still in the Czech schools are a little bit different. There's a school atlas used still, where you can see, sorry for the Czech writing, but at this moment it's, it's necessary, only the Czech state, the Czech state that is independent, fighting against the German enemy, fighting against the big Roman Empire. Uh, that's very, very strange to understand what is the position of the country. Uh, I've been talking that the, the main source are the central places. And in the development of the central places, 
we can see very big change between the 10th and the 11th century. Uh, as I told you, uh, the research focused on the obscenity domain, according to one of theories, the domain was situated in the central Bohemia, in this circle, and from the domain, the obscenity uh, started to control the other, other fortified sites, but most of them were at the beginning independent, controlled by the local rulers. Uh, during the 10th century, the central places were slowly occupied by the Obscenistic Duke. There are several um, ideas, how long does it take, what was, uh, how, how the take over the whole country by the, by the Obscenistic went. It's not necessary to talk about. What happened in the 11th century? Uh, very briefly, after the year 1000, where we can see a very interesting structural change. Uh, at this time, the Bohemia is completely under the control of Chemislitz, and they started to build a centralized system of the Castellan castles. These castellans were under control of the main ruler, they are the castles with the red dots, uh, and something that is Typical for these centers is that they are much more small. They were used a different way. So there is one, the side of Kozin, we will look at it later, like an example, and the Vratslav. And we count the extent of fortified sites from the first part, from the, in, in, uh, in the first phase uh, in tens of hectares. And the small castles are not larger than 10 hectares. Uh, very interesting question is, what is the difference between the local rulers in the 10th century and the rulers or the castellans who control the castle and its surrounding? And uh, the castellans were completely responsible to the, to the king, uh, to, the, to the duke. But we don't know exactly how that worked. And I think if you want to find the difference between the local rulers in the 10th century and the Castellans, it's the level of the autonomy. Because all the time, since the end of the 9th century, the Psemi states were as a top ruling family. Uh, one of the best examples we have, the transformation from the 10th century large stronghold to 11th century, also the 9th, 10th century, and the 11th century, Castellan Castle that ended in the 13th century by medieval town. There is picture of a reconstruction of the, the of the of the fortified sites from the 11th century, the Castellan uh, the Castellan Castle. Uh, what is important to understand, let's say, the administration or the cent centralization of the state? We know it's, it's right popular the structure, the, say, the hierarchy of a, a central places based on the functions uh, described by Ike Grimut Dahmer. But in a Czech conditions, this uh, structure is a little bit unclear. Uh, as we know, uh, as we can reconstruct from the archaeological resources and also from very few written informations, uh, we, can, we can see that the most of the settlement, the hinterland of the, of the fortified sites, is situated up to the distance of seven, mo not more than 10 kilometers. So it's very close to the, uh, to the castle. And uh, the other analysis uh, of the needs, of economical needs of these centers shows that uh, that can be fulfilled the needs up to five six kilometers again. So it's very very probable that uh, these sites were existing as a independent economical units. It's something that we're missing in the 10th century is the real structure, the real pyramid, the real hierarchy. We have the central places with many central functions and normal 
agricultural settlement. Uh, that the creation of the centralized structure, the beginnings, we can see from the 11th, but more in the 12th century. Uh, another example, there was a lot of said in this session about the Christianization. Christianization is nothing new. The contact with uh, this belief in, uh, in, in uh, Bohemia, in Moravia, goes very deep to the 9th century, but we were at the, at, the, at the beginning of the 9th century, the Bavarian missions, uh, the other very uh, uh, unclear um, moment occurred in 845 when 14 Bohemian dukes, 14 dukes from the whole country, that probably were the rulers of the other strongholds, not only under control of the came to the Regensburg and asked to be baptized. And of course, the first Chemistic Duke uh, was baptized in Great Moravia. All the contacts with the Christianity is connected with the elites. And the Christianity is coming to society through the elites. And that can be very good, visible on burial places and structures of burial places. Now I will show you several examples. We will start at the center of Bohemia, at the Prague Castle. The Prague Castle is here. And the <coughs> orange uh, uh, places, the, the places marked by the orange, are the burial places surrounding the castle and only small, much more smaller burial places we will find inside the castle nearby the churches. This structure exists until the end of the 10th century and then it has changed that you will see later. Uh, the question is also that the definition of this elite's graves is not only in equipment but much more important are the positions of the places where the, where the people were buried, nearby the churches. Because also in the other burial places, we can find very richly equipped graves with the jewelry, with weapons, and other typical light uh, features. Another example, also from the central Bohemia, the side Budej, where you can see again the same picture, fortified area. Uh, still standing uh, a church from the first half of the 10th century and so in, in the burial places in the surrounding. The last picture, uh, it's uh, in a, uh, eastern Bohemia, uh, fortified site called Libice. Again, the picture where central church at the uh, so-called Acropolis or in the valley of the, of the stronghold. And the other, very important, is the central uh, cemetery with almost 2,000 uh, uh, graves. And this picture, and it's unique for the, for the side of Libice, where you can very clearly follow the change in the 11th century, when all the graves from the surrounding move inside of the fortified area. And this, the reason why the graves has moved, or the burial places has moved, just in the center of the settlement, can be one of the result of the Christianization, not only the highest, highest part of the society, the elites, but also the rest of the inhabitants of the, of the stronghold. Of course, like in any other European regions, it's, uh, it's very important to say that it's not the end of the Christianization. So some remains of the paganic rituals we can find in the 14th, 15th century. But probably this 11th century is one of the crucial points of the Christianization. Uh, the last pig connected with the changes of the 11th century 
is connected with the technology and with the processing of non-ferrous materials uh, at several of, again, central places where disco was discovered a special pottery. Pottery that was secondary used uh, for processing of uh, non-ferrous materials, especially for processing of uh, uh, cleaning of, uh, of uh, silver but also there are remains of gold, that you can see here on the, on the shirt, and of course copper and lead. Lead is one more interesting feature of the 11th century or the end of the 10th and 11th century. Uh, during last year, thanks to the metal detectorists, especially metal detectorists, started to appear on many fortified sites uh, remains of lead in form of the bars, in form of the weights, but also in form of special circles. We don't know how they were or uh, what was the purpose to, the, uh, to, to, to produce them. It's not the weights, they, are, they, uh, they occur on a very large area from Poland to Slovakia to part of the Eastern Germany to Alp. Uh, I don't know about the evidence in the western part of the Europe, but it's only one part. But the question is, the question is why so much lead occurs on the sides? Because the lead was not used in a construction material, as a construction material, we don't have lead roofs, for example, and probably the most of the lead was used for the cleaning of silver. Uh, and that started with an idea to look for the production sites. This is a picture from excavations of this summer, led by Ladislav Verazin. He's sitting here in this hall. And uh, this, this excavation uh, discovered a <coughs> furnace. The furnace, we have a detail, a detail here. And so, uh, uh, the analysis with the portable excel file proved that this furnace and the other features are connected with the production of non-ferrous materials. You know? uh, there's a large amount of uh, copper, of course, lead, also gold, but we have no silver. We have also no slags in this production area and no remains of silver ore, probably in this place was partly refined silver ore, uh, cha uh, changed into the pure silver, and we have the evidence nowadays very similar from two sides. One is in Vishehrad, one is already mentioned in Libice, and this had probably connected with production for the mints. The minting started in the second half of the of the 10th century, so that is Vishehrad. It's a, and this research, we can say it's uh, at, the, at the beginning. So, conclusions. Uh, there are very important structural changes in the second half of the 10th century to the 11th century. Uh, the economy of the state changed from the extensive, intensive use of the resources. That's the change in the centralized system of the castles. And of course, we, there occurs very important changes in the society, Christianization, and emergence of the number of families in the 11th century, and of course, uh, the technical innovations. Thank you for your attention.